the development of the individual starts with a crisis. No man is born without a pattern. The problem is, we are deeply unconscious of this fact. We spend our lives living outside of ourselves. If a man could look into himself, he would see the truth. And when he does, in our days, he thinks he's gone mad. No man can change himself into anything from sheer reason. He can only change into what he potentially is. When such a change becomes necessary, the previous mode of adaptation, already in a state of decay, is unconsciously compensated by the archetype of another mode. This internal crisis marks the beginning of the development of the individual.
And it goes on because if the gap between consciousness and unconsciousness continues to widen, the subject risks the fatal split of his personality. It is a war in which he risks losing the one thing he can hardly ever attain again, the innate features that make him unique. This discovery cannot be made by someone who lives unconsciously. That is the issue we... When you're not expecting me for dinner? Yes, I was. Come in. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. Pleasure. Cheers. Mm. The meat looks so great. Thank you so much. And if it tastes as good as it looks and as it smells, it's gonna be awesome. <laughs> I'm gonna give this a try. Mm. Mm. This is really awesome. Thank you so much. You just did a very good job on that. I just remember having eaten such a great steak. I was thinking about writing a paper on the process of individuation. Stop! What? Don't you see what's happening to us? You have no idea who you are. Why are you doing this? No.
countless times in history has man experienced that individual consciousness means separation and opposition. In the neurosis lies hidden his worst enemy and best friend. The aim of individuation is nothing less than to rid the self of the false wrappings of the persona. At the end, the individual is the only reality.